a step-by-step guide to plein air painting on the iPad. Thanks to Gavin for suggesting that I do this video. Uh, I hope it helps explain um, my process a little bit and I'm sure it will change over time. So I'll, I'll do a few more of these videos as I go. So tips for painting outside. Firstly, find shade. The iPad works great indoors, but it also works outdoors well too. Uh, but you just need to find some shade uh, to see the screen. The problem is when direct sunlight shines on the screen, you can't properly see which colors you're selecting. I try to make sure that I always find a shady spot where the sun isn't shining um, behind me, over my shoulder and onto the screen, and that I'm always facing forwards towards the direction of the sun. The second point is about making it comfortable. I recently bought a camping stool that fits uh, in my bag, which makes it much more comfortable. Um, beforehand, I'd just sit on the floor or find a tree or bench or wall to perch on, which is absolutely fine. Uh, you just get a few more options with a stool and fewer insects interrupting you and less cramp in your legs. The third point is uh, to stay charged. I've uh, quite a few times run out of battery. Uh, the battery life's amazing on the iPad, but I'd recommend having a portable charger with you uh, if you do want to do a few drawings uh, in one location. So, start with a thumbnail. I always start with a thumbnail. I find it helps me make sure everything is in the right place and it gives me some control over the design of the image. I often adjust my thumbnails as I go in order to get everything I want in the image. I'll realise that I've drawn a building way too close or that I'm missing a tree that I wanted to include. So I'll redraw the edges of the thumbnail to include more of the scene. I find it's just a really good way to ease into the painting and helps to determine how you want to tackle the scene from the very start. Once the thumbnail is drawn, I expand it to fill the canvas. And here too, I slightly tinker with where I place it um, until I'm happy. Sometimes I give more or a little bit less sky. So the things to do, start by drawing a rectangle or the shape of your canvas. Sketch in the elements. Looking at where things connect helps when drawing the scene. Consider if your thumbnail contains everything you want it to. If not, keep drawing past the lines of your box and add new edges. Scale it up to fit the size of your canvas and lower the opacity so that you can use it as a guide for your painting. Now it's time to block in the main colours. So I'll block in the base colour for each element on a different layer. So I'll do the sky on one layer, the clouds on the next one, the horizon, the ground, um, the buildings, trees, all on separate layers. At this point, I just want to get a very loose block of colour in place for each of the main elements. This stage only takes a couple of minutes, but I find that by filling the whole canvas with colour first, it feels like the image quickly takes shape. So, things to do. Firstly, select your preferred brush for painting. Start with the sky or wherever you prefer. Uh, add a new layer and paint in the sky. Then add another new layer, paint in the clouds. Keep it loose at this stage. Add another new layer, paint in the next element and continue till all are blocked in. Now it's time for adding the tone. So now I go back through all the elements, selecting their layer in the layer bar and add a darker colour to indicate the darker areas and a lighter colour to indicate the lighter areas. This transforms the painting into something that starts to make sense. I look for the darkest areas and the lightest areas across the scene and make sure that this is the same on my screen. So some of the things to do, firstly, select a layer. For example, let's go with the trees. Uh, choose a color that is slightly darker than the base color. Uh, you can look to your actual scene for color help here. Uh, and then paint in the darker areas of tone on that layer. Then choose a lighter color and paint in the lighter areas. Now, if you continue this for all the elements, including the clouds and the foreground and everything, 
uh, the painting will really start to take shape. Now it's time to add the details. This part can definitely take the longest. I tend to just jump around between things that I notice in the scene. So I might look at the twigs and the leaves on the ground. Uh, so I'd select that ground layer on the layers panel, um, find a new color and work into that. Or you can work on a new layer above that if you're feeling a bit cautious and then merge it down when you're ready. And I continue working across the painting and all different details uh, until it feels like you've done enough. Uh, it's up to you how much detail you put in to an image. Um, I prefer to only do as much as I feel is necessary. I prefer to move on to a new painting once I feel like there's enough detail in the current one, but that's just personal preference. So the things to do, do your details for each element separately on a new layer. If they work well, you can merge them with the main layer for that element. If you don't like the details, you can delete them and try again. Look at the real scene more than the painting on your screen. It's easy to spend too much time looking at the painting, but you only see the true details when you spend a long time really looking at the scene. And finally, the finishing touches. To finish a drawing, I like to emphasise the highlights and the shadows. I add a new layer at the top of the layer panel, select a light yellow and put it on the overlay or soft light blending mode. I then check the scene for all the lightest areas and little highlights and I draw them in again to make sure they really stand out on the screen. I then add a new layer and select black or dark blue and set the layer to multiply on the layer blending modes. I then make sure the shadows are drawn in a little bit darker and deeper on this layer uh, and I feel like this helps give the image some extra depth. From time to time, once I've exported a video or JPEG of the image, I'll slightly tweak the colours, uh, the overall colour balance in Photoshop or After Effects, but that's uh, only if I think it needs further changes. So things to do, add a new layer at the top of the layer panel, select a light colour, I usually choose yellow, and set the layer style to overlay or soft light. Draw in any final highlights or areas that are particularly bright, adjust the opacity to your preference. Next, add a new layer, select a dark colour or black, and set it to multiply. Draw in any areas or shadows that are particularly dark and adjust the opacity to your preference. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Any thoughts, let me know in the comments and thanks again.